for young gay people to feel like it's a free ride for them when you really, you know, you've worked really hard and you still have a lot to do. Yeah, no, there is a lot to do. And um, people like Supervisor Dufty and, and Mark Leno, we have some amazing leaders that are, that, are, that are shedding light on some of these issues. But the issue of violence on the LGBTQ community is amazing that the level of violence that still goes on today. There's an organization called Gay American Heroes mm -hmm. um, on, on their honorary board. It's gayamericanheroes.com. But they track the unfortunate incidences of, of, of murders that occur each year to our, that are hate crimes. Mm -hmm. And there are documented, I think last year there were 32 documented so that's only in the states where it's still a where it's actually classified as a hate crime can we document it that it was a murder due to a hate crime and it's still going on and these are young people folks like ryan skipper who is a teen who was murdered this year in florida um mm. uh you know violence against um any marginalized or disenfranchised community um is condoned when you have folks who say don't be authentic. Don't don't celebrate that community. Let's try to ignore that community. And in a way that almost condones people to move into into violence. And um, you know, there's a fine line between you know non-acceptance and I mean, where do you where do you, how do you tell a young person you know we don't accept this community, we don't consider them equal, we don't recognize their marriages, but don't be violent to them. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's a very confusing message when you look at a young person. Uh, the message that we should be is ha that we should have out there is you know is we are so much stronger when you embrace everyone who's different. Mm -hmm. And you asked me earlier about Harvey and what he was like. Harvey would walk into the room and look at the person, absolutely would find the person who felt either the most outplaced or the most different, mm -hmm. and he would go up there and make them feel part of everybody. And, I mean, that was one of the great gifts that Harvey had. Being inclusive. Well, we were speaking to some of the people that went today um, for the uh, rally that you had this morning and speaking about how they were spit upon how they were yelled at, and that that was the first time some of these people had seen such opposition towards what they naturally are. And why do you think there's such fear? Well, um, you know, I think Sally Gerhardt actually said it best in the campaign 30 years ago against um, Prop 6, mm -hmm. um, which was the Briggs Initiative. When you tell someone who bases their life on an absolute, so you know, if I do this and this, I go to heaven. Um, uh, when you tell them that, you know, a belief that you've had that a man and a man and a woman and a woman or someone who's transgendered is not living the life that's right, mm -hmm. then um, when you when we come in and say, no, it is right, and not only is it right, it can be part of the realm of, of, of love and can be blessed by God in whatever your definition of God is, then you unravel the very fabric of what their whole life is based on and that brings fear and fear never moves anyone in the right direction so the people that were out there who were spitting on people and who were who were hurling really mean-spirited insults to people they're being moved by fear and you know and I I won't move into de denigrating them what I'll say is that we have to find a way of reaching those people we have to find a way to make them realize that we have nothing to be fear there's nothing to be fearful for to embrace your daughter to embrace me to embrace anyone who's different from them we're gonna be richer from that and we have to find a way to 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 reach out to them and let them know that I almost want to reach out to them and say you're in terrible pain yeah um, and and you know really look at me I bleed like you do I hurt like you do I love like mm -hmm. I want to love like mm -hmm. you do I want to be able to marry like you do I want yeah. equal rights like you do there's nothing that I'm trying to take away from you yeah that's exactly it that's and <clears throat> to me I just I just for the life of me don't understand why if a couple wants to bring a child and raise a child it doesn't matter who they are if they love that child they're a family you know and <laughs> end of discussion but I don't want to get my own opinion all wrapped up in here. Um, let's talk a little bit about the movie. How accurate was the movie in your eyes? Well, the movie was a very good representation of you know this decade in mm -hmm. Harvey's life. Um, now, not everybody could be put, portrayed in the movie that was involved in Harvey's life. Mm -hmm. I think that there are you know, some amazing people like Gwen Craig and, um, and uh, Sally Gerhardt who were part of, of the movement that Harvey kind of led. Mm -hmm. um, 
But the movie was amazing in that it really told his story. Lance Black, um, Justin Lance Black, um, Lance is just an incredible um, storyteller and mm -hmm. writer, and he did an amazing job in terms of um, putting into this time period a story that people could walk away from and understand what motivated my uncle and kind of the message that he wanted the world to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, he was very prophetic, and I thought that that came out. You know that the movie is kind of narrated by Sean doing a tape recording of what would happen if I were assassinated. And that actually Harvey left three of those tape messages of how he would like um, to be remembered if he was assassinated. So he really did feel that, um, that he was going to be taken from this world. That's, I have a little um, uh, quote from one of those tape recordings. Uh, he wrote, if a bullet should enter my brain, let that bullet destroy every closet door. And it just destroyed the closet door of his nephew. Um, so, uh, uh -huh. you know, he, uh, Harvey and I never had the conversation about me being gay. Oh, you didn't. We had a conversation at my grandfather's funeral, his father's funeral. I was 15, mm -hmm. and I talked about just feeling different. And that's when he gave me the, the saying about you're the medicine that the world needs, um, especially more so because you feel different. But he never moved into the realm of gay. No, I know from Ann Cronenberg and from everyone else I've talked to that he came back and he said, oh, I've got a gay nephew. And oh, he guess, knew. <laughs> he knew. Well, of course, you know, it's uh, the gaydar thing. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. but, um, but the, you know, the amazing thing is that um, my conversations with him were around self-acceptance and he was kind of my touchstone to, mm -hmm. to self-acceptance and now I forgot what initial initially was your question there um, I don't think I have one I'm just enjoying talking <laughs> to you I you do have a letter that you wanted to tell us a little bit about that Sean Penn actually had with him during the acceptance yeah speech. What's, um, what's really great I did bring it today so oh good. I think I did it okay. might, it might actually be in my coat <laughs> not a problem okay I'm okay. gonna reach back sure sure um, but the letter actually is um, uh, was at the at the time that I had that conversation with Harvey mm -hmm. over um, feeling different at my grandfather's funeral. We talked for about five hours, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and he just, you know, he just wanted to convince me that whoever I end up being, the world needed, and follow my passion, and whoever I was is someone to be celebrated. That really was kind of the message that he wanted to give me. So he he actually got the board of supervisors to. Um, he was running to unseat them, um, one of them, and okay. he got them, they, they, they adjourned in memory of my grandfather. And so he sent my father the proclamation that they adjourned. And he said, you know, they're adjourning over someone who wants to unseat them and put a LGBT person on or an Asian who has never been on or an African-American at that time who had mm -hmm. never been on. And he, they're, they're actually doing it. And he said they were doing it out of respect for me. And I was, and, and I'll read a part of it. Yes, please. He said, if there's any way for the dead to look back on us, I am sure that dad, meaning his father, would be smiling on this. In some small or great way, it's telling him that his son has affected a city, has shown people that they can be embraced and celebrated. I think he would be proud of it. I'm only sorry that he did not live to see the effect that his son has and to see victory someday, not just for me, not just for uh, disenfranchised uh, communities, but for everyone. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Look at that. So do you feel him with you when you do what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. It's amazing. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is his class ring. Uh -huh. uh, this is his high school class ring, which mm -hmm. was very important to him. And, and, um, and so whenever I speak about Harvey, I, I, I wear it. And partly I wear it because it's got the date so, bra so, so, so clear, 1947. Mm -hmm. If you think back, that's two years after the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. um, and for, this, for my uncle to have said to himself at some point um, in his young adult life, I'm just going to be out there and I'm not going to shrink back and I'm not going to be even quietly out there. I'm going to be loudly proclaiming not just for me but for everyone who is marginalized, everyone who's, who's denied their human rights. I'm going to speak out for that. And, um, you know, and, and people told them don't do it, which I thought came out very clearly in the film. Or if you do it, do it quietly. And, you know, if anything, he did not do it quietly. No, not at all. <laughs> Quite the opposite. And I love that about him. I love that.